Today's podcast is with Moritz Boringer, and Moritz made history in 2016 by becoming the first person drafted from Europe into the NFL without having played college football. It's an absolutely wild story, cool story. We talk about that a little bit. After his stint in the NFL, he came back to Germany and rejoined the Unicorns, and we were teammates for two years, and it was great to be able to be teammates and become friends and he's just started a cool project with his brother that we talk about a little bit in the podcast. So, without further ado, Moritz Boringer. That's to sync the audio. All right, we've got the man here, the legend, the legendary Mobo Moritz Boringer. First thing I notice is you're not wearing shoes, and I am wearing shoes inside. This is the. Uh, Classic German American, yeah, especially in the old house. I don't want to get your house dirty. <laughs> you got Morris came in, and his brother Paul, right off camera, took their shoes off like good guests, and I'm in here in my own apartment wearing shoes like a degenerate. They look so, cool, didn't though. You? Yeah, they're cool. I mean, got my Nikes. Morris Burr, what's up, man? How's life? Oh, it's going pretty good. Hmm? Yeah. Did you retire from football? Yep. Just like me. Yep. <laughs> Couple of old guys, man. How's it feel? How's it feel to be retired? I don't know. There's nothing really different <laughs> so far. I feel like because <laughs> <laughs> the season hasn't even started. Yeah, or what, exactly. Yeah. Started. Ah, oh, man. So, got a lot of questions for you. Of course, mm. I'm sure that people want to hear. But the first thing I want to know is what have you been up to since our season ended? We we won the German Bowl in October. In glorious fashion, and you since retired. And now, what have you been up to? You started like this project with your brother Paul. What's exactly. Yeah, um, we started T Lab Sports, okay. and it's yeah, basically we're trying to give like some of the resources and stuff that I learned through my times with like football in Germany yeah. and the uh, NFL, and try and give that back to like whoever's interested, like yeah. kids or so even older players, like. Yeah, so you is it like a training program or how does it work? Yeah, like it has training program components in it. It also has like some football knowledge stuff in it nice. just to like get deeper understanding of how football works and like certain positions and stuff like yeah. that. And then also some tools for like recovery and stuff. Oh, sweet. So, so just like encompassing all of the yeah, basically all knowledge that. that you picked up in your yeah. time in the NFL and in the States. So what is it an app or is it in person or how does it work? Right now it's just on a website. Okay. We're working on it to get it in an app. Okay, it just nice. takes a little while. Yeah, I know. I'm developing an app yeah. right now too <laughs> with my brother. Yeah. And it's like it takes so much time yeah. and back and forth. Um, okay, so it's on a website. And anybody can sign up and get like get exactly, yeah. work with you guys and get yeah. this knowledge and experience. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's it, for like – even if you don't play football, like we have stuff where you can just improve your athletic ability. Yeah. Okay. Cause yeah, for just like generally and stuff. Yeah. Just. Okay. And where do you go? Player. You go to T. What do you go to? T lap dot com. T lap minus sports dot com. T lap minus sports. So many. So often with websites in Germany, you guys always have those minuses in there. You guys yeah. love the dash. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's going on with that? <laughs> I don't know. T lap minus sports. All right, we're gonna put the link in the description. That sounds good. Top thing right there. And if you guys, if anybody has any interest in getting better at sports, or football, or being a better athlete, from the mind of Moritz Burner. <laughs> What what are some of the things like what's what do you think one of your favorite things that you learned in your time in the in the states with football that you've applied now to T lap that like some fourteen year old kid that wants to play football can steal directly from your from your program? I would say just like the whole route running stuff. Yeah, I think that's why I improved most over the time I was in the United States. Yeah, because when I played in Germany, I was pretty. Raw, I just ran. <laughs> like <laughs> that's all I did. I just ran and caught the ball, which is basically playing wide receiver. But <laughs> if you just play it, yeah. If you play at a higher level, you need some yeah. a little. Yeah. Do you feel like? Skill. I mean, and we'll get into that. Like, like you. So you feel like the route running was probably one of the things that you improved the most with your time in the states. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just because I had to do it a lot. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> all right, we'll talk a little bit more about T-Lap and for everybody. Any, any of you people that are uh, that get bored with our conversation and click off at this point, well, <laughs> click on tlapsports.com in the description. But I wanted to go back to like the beginning of your of your football career. You've done a billion interviews, you know, 
during oh, yeah. uh, during the 2016-17 years. I'm sure you're sick of it. I'm sure you're sick of all these questions. But just just for the people who don't know, let's I'm going to set the stage a little bit. You were the first person drafted into the NFL from Europe who did not play college football. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. 2016. Drafted by the Minnesota Vikings. Now, let's go back a little bit before that. When did you start playing football? I started four years before that, yeah. Four years before that in Kreilsheim. Okay. And, yeah, that was not the best team. But <laughs> How old were you at this time? I was 17, almost 18, yeah. You started playing football at age 17 and got drafted into the NFL. It's ridiculous. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you started playing in Kreilsheim. And did you initially start playing wide receiver? Uh, yeah, I played receiver and a little tight end already there because yeah, yeah, I could just run. And from the very beginning, did you just absolutely like you just your first practice? Did you just dominate people? Like, oh wow, I'm really good at this, or did it take some time? Mm, in the practice, it took some time, but first game in guys we played against Ludwigsburg. Yeah, I scored five touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> But it was like <laughs> those poor <Yeah>. children <laughs> that you must have been playing against. I don't know. I was not that big. I was just well, like how this big? Wh- how big were you at this dude. time? Like, I don't know. Like maybe like seventy kilograms tops. Or something. I okay. Don't know. Okay. Like One sixty something like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Seventeen-year-old like, skinny Moritz. Yeah. Yeah. Tall, okay. skinny, fast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> okay. So then you played in Kral- Did you play in Kralsheim for one year, two years? How long? One year in the under nineteen, and then yep. I played two years in the like adult team. The senior team there yeah. at Kralsheim. Yeah. Okay. And then you and what league was Kralsheim at this time? Like in the GFL. The the. the First year with the adult team, it was the last league, and then we <laughs> really? went up one. Oh, league. you, you got we promoted? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. I hope you got a ring for that. I think we got like a little like <laughs> yeah, trophy like, or something. <laughs> That's got to be one of your top athletic achievements <laughs> of all time, I would say. Right at the top of your Wikipedia page. <laughs> okay, so then you, then you, yeah, play in the senior team, and you end up playing for the last league, and you get recruited to the Unicorns, which is where we met, sort of, this year. But how did you get recruited to the Unicorns? Who contacted you? Mm, I basically went to a tryout with Hortenburg. Okay. They were in the GFL, too, at the time. Uh-huh. And then my coach in Kreis, I said, like, don't go there. <laughs> go t- <laughs> If you go anywhere, you should go to Schwerischal. And yep. he talked to Jordan, and then okay. Jordan was like, Let's meet, and basically that's <laughs> when you know you're gonna sign for, sign up to play sure. for him. <laughs> Once Jordan gets uh, gets his hooks in you, you're gonna play for him. Yeah. <laughs> for damn sure, that's for damn sure. Okay, so you had big dreams of going from the last league in Germany. Big dreams of playing in this GFL two. <laughs> this was this was your this was uh, little do we know that a year later basically you'd be in NFL. <laughs> okay, so then you get hooked up with the unicorns, and you start going to unicorns practice. And how was that first year with the Unicorns in GFL 1? Could you feel a big difference? Yeah, my main goal was to play, and that's what I told Jordan, too, yeah. that I don't want to, like, just sit on the bench yeah, and right do the nothing. Mm-hmm. And then it was definitely way more structured. Like, there were actually people in the practices, like, mm-hmm. in guys, and that was the main reason why I left there, yeah. because it was just sometimes, like, seven, eight people in yeah. the practice, and it was like, I'm not driving an hour for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. It's hard because I got asked the same question after the first GFL game. It was like, what's the difference? Yeah. <laughs> I, was, like, I just scored two touchdowns. <laughs> and I was I like, don't I don't know. I just run. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm just running the scoring yeah. touchdowns. <laughs> so it's probably like a little bit faster and a little bit more structured and stuff. Yeah, and but we actually had like plays yeah you had plays and stuff but you so you you only played for the unicorns for this one year in yeah. that year with the gfl one did you feel did you feel like you just dominated people because i saw tape like i mean you know like in i'm edited unicorn sound oh. and i have this more it's boring or saying don't sue me by the way i, I didn't get your no. release sign <laughs> <laughs> and like look through your highlights of that gfl season you absolutely dominated people did you feel like you were dominating people in that year yeah, I don't know. It was weird because, like, it was not anything 
technical that I did yeah. better than other people. I just was way faster than anyone. <laughs> and we just ran these screens and it just always worked <laughs> because everyone was blocking good too. But yeah, uh, yeah we'll chalk <laughs> all of ran. your success up to the blocking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you had a lot of success with this GFL season. This year you guys went to the German Bowl and lost, I think. Yeah. Um, it's Bon Track. Yeah. Bon Track, man. Um, then after this season, this is sort of when things started to go crazy for you a little bit, right? After that 2015 season? Yeah. Did you get contacted? Walk me through this process of that GFL season ends in October and in April you're drafted. What the hell happened on those months? Nothing really happened (laughs) until like, um, oh boy, I don't even know when it was like. Probably end of February or something like that. Okay. Like some dude wrote me on Facebook. Yeah. And it was basically he got my contact through Anthony Double and he played mm-hmm. for Pondrick at the time and yep. he was in the US. Mm-hmm. And I think he just got signed to the Giants. Yeah. And then this guy just wrote me a, a message on Facebook <laughs> and it was like, Hey, give me your number and I was like, Yeah, yeah why not? Okay. <laughs> like what's the worst thing that could happen? Mm-hmm. Then he called me and he's like you want to come to florida and yeah. train there and we'll see what can happen after that yeah and i had um spring break basically in okay. school i had two weeks off and he was like yeah just come for two weeks and i was like why not what like I, <laughs> worst case i just take a two-week vacation in, mm-hmm. in florida it's yeah. not that bad either yep, not bad <laughs> and then yeah i basically got there we did like some pre-testing the next day just next day i arrived like i was still jet lagged and yeah. everything and then he said like you're not leaving <laughs> <laughs> so did you stay you didn't leave then from there no i it just like you went all the way almost all the way to the draft yeah i just stayed the whole time and then i went home <laughs> just before the draft because <laughs> you i think when i spoke to jordan about this he his from his side he's like oh yeah Moritz told me like yeah he's going to the states to go work yeah. out for a couple <laughs> weeks he'll be back because we have unicorn practice and he'll be yeah. back and we'll <laughs> yeah i told him i'm gonna be gone for two weeks <laughs> <laughs> like that was my understanding too yeah. <laughs> okay so you guys were just doing workouts there and they obviously saw your talent and your ability like all right this guy can't this guy can't go back he's got to yeah. stay here and has a legit shot so then you were working out what was the day-to-day like were you this was it when you were at uh xp xp okay in Florida, and you guys were just day to day working out and training with other potential prospects, or what yeah, was it? we were basically doing the combine prep that they were doing yeah. there. And yeah. then you did a pro day. Yeah, so then we like talked to some people and saw like what what could happen, and yeah. then they were like, "Yeah, there's potential that we could get him somehow drafted." Yeah. And then I got in with the. Um, Florida Atlantic University. FAU, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. When you started to hear people talk about, you know, you might have a chance to get drafted, like you might go to the NFL, having only played football at this point for four years, only one year even in the highest league in Germany, how did you feel hearing this stuff? Like, wait, really? You get, like, did you did you feel like, yeah, hell yeah, of course I can, or what? Or what's the thought process? Like, I knew from a physical standpoint that I'm like right up there because I was training with other people mm-hmm. like Joey Bosa was there too at oh, like yeah. the XP so you kind That's of see sick. like what kind of people mm-hmm. work out there and you see like yeah you can like go on the same level athletically with them yep. obviously football wise I was mm-hmm. not that far at that point but then you're just like yeah I don't know it c- could happen like I don't know uh-huh. <laughs> I was really like open to everything I was just like basically living day by day it's just like you know, <laughs> i don't know i just like picture you just, just fresh german guy in the states yeah. <laughs> working out with some of the best athletes now in, yeah. in florida on the cusp yeah, of the like nfl or pierre gaston was there uh, yeah like one bold and like there was some good that's so sick that's so, and mobo yeah. man uh, and mobo okay so then you're just so then you're you're leading up to the draft and then did teams nfl teams contact you yeah before so, the draft yeah okay so I went on the top 30 visits. Yep. I think, boy, I don't even know anymore, like 11 or 13 teams. Yep. So that was very stressful. <laughs> yeah. Because it was like in a two-week yeah. span. And my brother do those. Yeah. Those are crazy. Okay. And then I also had like some meetings in Florida with some scouts and stuff like that. Yep. And yeah, that, that was basically the whole pre 
draft thing. Did you did you cuz I'm assuming you had a top 30 with the Vikings. Yeah. Did you feel like that went better than the other ones or they showed more interest in you or you couldn't really tell? I think it's very hard to tell because they just I don't know, they they show you the plays and they yeah. talk to you and you little visit just just don't know anything yeah. afterwards. <laughs> I don't know, man. I have yeah. no idea. Okay. Sometimes so, you get very good food. <laughs> like that's it's the, the best, best part. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So then draft day comes. Where are you on draft day? I was in Chicago where the draft was at the time. Okay. You were oh. in Chicago. You're sitting there watching it. Yeah. Do you feel like do you feel at this point you expect to be drafted? Like if you didn't get drafted, would you be really disappointed where you'd be like, Oh, you know, that'd be crazy anyway, or did you expect it? No, like I I think I was hoping, mm-hmm. but it's really hard to like guarantee that you get drafted especially in the situation i was in like yeah it was just i don't know if someone's gonna give me a chance or not at that time so but then I knew that oh, yeah, someone's sorry. gonna sign me afterwards so like a lot of teams like contacted me when I was like yeah if you don't get drafted today we definitely want to yeah. sign you and so okay so then the vikings call you how'd that phone call go oh, i don't i didn't, literally don't remember, Can't remember. <laughs> no <laughs> blacked out i just know that they called pretty early yeah like four or five picks ahead yeah and we're like just don't hang up don't take any other calls yeah. <laughs> like we want to take you <laughs> oh that's so cool man that's yeah. so sick i think the coolest part was like my sister and my mom were there too like they oh they were they go. were there from yeah, it was kind of cool oh that's so cool paul you weren't there no, no. <laughs> only two people were allowed <laughs> uh, <laughs> paul didn't want to support his brother <laughs> That's so cool that you had them there. Okay, that's so cool. Um, did you have any – you probably didn't, but do you have any idea how monumental what you had just accomplished was? No, like the whole day was just weird because, first of all, it was so cold <laughs> the whole time. And you just do nothing. You, you yeah. just wait and yeah. just hope, and it's just like, what am I doing here? Like, yeah. And then afterwards, really nothing – changes at that moment i mm. feel like because you still like nothing changed you're yeah. just gonna get a contract <laughs> at some point <laughs> oh i'm in the nfl yeah. now okay, cool <laughs> nice um so then obviously you go through all of the stuff that happens after you get drafted you join the team you do a mini camp otas and everything and then you really settle into the united states and the nfl and getting into this life and what were some of the biggest adjustments for you once you entered into the NFL? Yeah, I think the hardest part was this. It was just somewhere where I didn't know anyone. Yeah. <laughs> and first time I moved out of a home, so <laughs> it was just like all this new stuff happening all at once, which is already hard if you do it like yeah. in your own country. Mm-hmm. But it's even harder when you like – go to a different country and i came like with a suitcase and that was basically what i was <laughs> yeah. like running around wow. every every day that was my whole life there and yeah i mean i can't imagine like it's I, I think about my brother's experience who is from the united yeah. states played college football so he's sort of in that world and then he had this experience not the same experience you had in the nfl but like in the nfl a bit and just how crazy and overwhelming it is even if you grew up yeah in the country and in this world, and you coming over from Germany, yeah. not having played college football, not, so you got no ease into this. Yeah. You just got thrust into it. Okay, how was how was it with the guys being in the NFL locker room? Yeah, they're definitely crazy people. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're I... normal. They're normal people too, but some of them are very crazy. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got people, you know, really coming from from all over all over the United States, yeah. different stories coming from different colleges and stuff. So you probably got to meet a, a whole eclectic group of yeah. teammates. It was like the rookie group. There were some cool people. Like I was hanging out, like some tight end. He got drafted, David Morgan. He got drafted the okay. same year. So I was hanging out with him and Joel. Mm-hmm. He was like a, he was on practice squad too for some time. Then mm-hmm. afterwards he was the quarterback there and he played for Wisconsin, I think. Oh, that's sweet. Okay. And, like, I was hanging out with them most of the time. Yeah. And I lived with Joel together. Okay, so cool. So it was a little easier. Just, okay. like, 
I'll live alone. Yeah. Okay, good. She had a friend. Okay, yeah. good. I think Which that Which is I... also hard because I didn't have, like, credit. Oh, so it's, yeah. It's very hard to get an apartment without credit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <And it's> like, <laughs> I could just put my family down because yeah. they don't even have credit either. In Damn, United I didn't even States. think about yeah, that. It was... <laughs> What a mess. So, okay, so that's good you had him. Yeah. I also remember that there was a story that <clears throat> um, that you didn't get a car and that you walked to practice every day or you walked to the facility. Yeah, that was every day. until like the season started. Okay. So, so like during like camp. Like OTAs and, during OTAs camp and, stuff. and stuff like that, yeah. And I remember thinking like, well, on the, 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 from my perspective now, that's just so shocking to Americans because Americans hate yeah. walking and cannot fathom walking. It wasn't even that far. That's <laughs> so like what I was going to say. How far minutes, was it? 15, 15 minute minutes. walk. Yeah, it was, it There's was an old bad. news story about yeah. it. <laughs> Crazy German player walks to practice. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> Yeah, he's walking like what two miles maybe. Yeah, like it's it probably nice. Bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I remember thinking that it's like classic America. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it is. So, how did you feel going to practice? Did you feel nervous going to like you're like okay, a year ago I'm practicing at Hagenbach at the GFL uh, for unicorns practice, and now I'm going to Minnesota Vikings practice. Do you feel nervous going into practice? I think the hardest part was that like every step you take is getting filmed and analyzed not just by the team but also by media people yeah which was very like new to me yeah <laughs> man i like weird because it's like yeah you will make mistakes in practice so mm -hmm. that's what practice is for to like fix the mistakes mm -hmm. <laughs> but then the media is just like saying that oh we don't know if that will ever work out and it was just like yeah i'm like that i'm practicing <laughs> yeah i'm practicing yeah. <laughs> shut up yeah that's got to be insane because i think about like when we practice and i mess up uh, there's no media scrutiny yeah. there's no one be like wow can alfieri play maybe they should cut yeah. him like that's got to be so annoying and then i was going to ask how how overwhelming was it because you got a lot of attention because like of course what is it 270 people get drafted every year but oh. you were a unique story and the media jumped on that and loved that, like because it was such a cool story. But was it overwhelming for you? Yeah, in the beginning it was crazy. Like it was just insane. I think my agent did like a good job of like yeah. keeping kind of away, but it was still a lot to handle, <laughs> especially because I don't like to do these things too much. <laughs> you have no <laughs> idea. I had to force Moritz to come on this podcast. He does not like to be. On. <laughs> Yeah, man. Like I can't. Was that just day to day? You're trying to, you're trying to develop as a football player. Yeah. But then also you have this whole other elephant on your back. Yeah, basically. I think what they tried most of the time was just like have, like group calls with media, so it was like not just okay one by one all mm -hmm. the time. That I have to give the same answers like anyways. Yeah. It's like they're all gonna ask like, the same yeah. questions. So yeah. So it's just like. All these people get together and just ask the same questions. What were some of the – What were, was there any questions that were annoying that you got asked? Oh, you probably, had to. probably most of them. Like, <laughs> I feel like the weirdest one was always like, yeah, what's your – like, are you trying to make the team now? And it's like, <laughs> no, I'm trying to get cut. Like, what? <laughs> Good like, question. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like that was the most, most asked question all the time. Yeah. Like, even like – when I was on practice squad, like, what's the goal for next season? I was like, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Make the roster. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so this was, was this your first time in the States, basically, also? No, I've been. You before, were there before? I think three times before. Oh, you had been a while? Okay. Or four times even, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you're now in this whole new world and a different, different life than you were a year ago. You're playing in the NFL. Um, what were like, I guess we talked about a little bit, your, your biggest strides that you feel like you made from being coached by NFL coaches besides the route running. And we got that. Okay. <laughs> Just like football in general. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't know anything when, yeah. I played, when I played in Germany, like, because there was no, really no time either. Like in Greisheim, we just practiced like a little bit, just ran around mm -hmm. a little bit. Then in Shreveshire, it was mostly trying to get time to learn the place because yeah. I didn't know them at the time. <laughs> yeah. And just, like, get to know other routes than what I ran in Gleitzheim, which was basically a five-yard out <laughs> in the slant. 
because <laughs> the quarterback couldn't throw that far so i had to like run the shorter routes and get the ball and then run and score <laughs> it's so funny to think of like the contrast of the f- the football you were playing yeah. in such a short amount of time yeah actually you know what i wanted to ask you is people said or that was a big thing that you started playing football because why did you start playing football there was like some the the team in Aalen, which yeah. actually they didn't play okay they just had like even less people than guys time mm-hmm. so they were practicing after our like pe class yeah and then a few people from the school practiced there or pl- played for that team yeah. and then we just stay with like two of my best friends <laughs> okay <laughs> and that's basically how i got to football <laughs> so what what is the story of you watching adrian peterson clips on yeah, YouTube? that's where i started then yeah okay so I so tell to me this. running back as soon as <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> so yeah, how- i just like w- looked those and football is that because i wanted to know more about the sports yeah. and that was one of the first things that i saw and just like the way he ran and just i don't know just amazed me it's so sick <laughs> and then i went to play running back for guys and but they said no you're too tall and skinny <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool though how, like when you now you're how we're, we're both we're close to the same age what you're two years younger than me are you 28 29 29 okay i'm 30 now you have a little perspective kind of looking back on this how crazy is it to you that you started playing football then you watched highlights of adrian peterson <laughs> To sort of develop your knowledge, and then you end up playing for this same team that he played for. Yeah, it's like the coincidence is just very crazy. <laughs> Super, <laughs> it just really doesn't make any sense. Especially like how fast it happened. Yeah, I think that's the craziest part about the whole thing. It's insane. I mean, it's just a couple years from you watching those YouTube yeah. videos. It's just some like I don't know anything. I'm six four and think I'm gonna yeah. play running back. <laughs> 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 to being on the Vikings. Okay, very interesting. Um, so then you had the first... Wh- how many years were you with the Vikings? One year, and then I got cut before the... Okay, and then the you year. went to Bengals, yeah. correct? Uh, okay. And what was... Um, were there any major differences being in Cincinnati than being um, in Minnesota? Different position. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, you that started playing tight end yeah, then, that right? that was the biggest difference. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so then did you make a real big effort to put on weight when you switched to tight end? Yeah, so I went back to Florida basically for that off season okay. before I went to the Bengals, and then the goal was just to put on as much weight without getting slow and fat. <laughs> okay, and how did you do this? Cash bets <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't have that there. <laughs> if I they would have had that, that would have probably worked even better. But <laughs> it was pasta most of the time. Okay. <laughs> like I just put as much pasta as I could fit on the plate, and yeah. then I just cut chicken very small because it was very dry there. Nice. Okay. And then I just put ketchup on top. And how? Just, <laughs> just, it was my food. It sounds delicious. Uh, <laughs> uh, how much weight did you put on? think like 15 20 pounds okay do you feel like you do you feel like you kept your speed or do you feel like you lost speed yeah like we did another like kind of combine uh-huh. kind of thing and it was still ran like a four four seven or something oh, so God it was damn. still good speed yeah for those who don't know Moritz put up ridiculous numbers go look them up mm. what Moritz put up at pro day combine numbers <laughs> disgusting absolutely disgusting numbers um okay so then you end up playing what three more years with the with the Bengals on the Bengals. Yeah, before the third year, got cut. Yeah. Okay. What would you say? You had this crazy experience in the NFL, coming from Germany, blah, blah blah. What would you say are some of the biggest lessons you took from this whole experience? That's a good question. I don't know. Well, I'm full. <laughs> Welcome to the Imported Podcast. You know. I think it definitely helped me to like be my own person and like go my own way kind yeah. of because before that I was definitely more even more introverted and quiet mm-hmm. and I think being forced in these situations that helped a lot yeah because I like before I went to the NFL, they called me silence I know I was gonna <laughs> say that <laughs> yeah and you then, were like, silence yeah <laughs> The ones that were still there, they couldn't believe how much I was talking after I uh-huh. came back. So that was, I think that was 
it definitely helped in that way because you're just forced to like talk yeah. to people and yeah so i was gonna say some guys in the nfl locker room probably like would like wouldn't let you be quiet or like force you to talk or like yeah you know and when like, you're just in so many different situations yeah and you kind of like want to talk to people because you like get to know them see mm -hmm. their story and like yeah maybe you can learn something from them uh, I w like, <laughs> so funny they called you silence. Yeah. <laughs> you come back, and so the guys that did play in 2015 with you, mm. when you came back, and was it 21 or 22? Oh, 21. Huh. They're like, who the hell is this guy? Yeah. <laughs> Talking. <laughs> <laughs> so no longer silence, Smorts. Okay, so you'd say that yeah, kind of, kind of coming into. Oh, one sec. Question. We had to we had to switch batteries. Sorry for the interruption, guys. High budget production here. Um, so, you know, what was I saying? I was saying, okay, we're talking about the lessons. Okay. You feel, you feel like you sort of blossomed into who you are. Um, and <clears throat> then talk to me then about coming back to Germany to play for the unicorns in 2021 after having this insane experience developing as a human off the field and also as a football player on the field. I mean, you've had NFL practices for three, four years. How did it feel to come back? Germany well first of all the biggest change was that I was back in school <laughs> <laughs> so that was <laughs> I think the bigger challenge than actually playing football for sure because <laughs> <laughs> did you take a pause like were you starting studying when you got no I was one and a half years in okay you were in the so, middle of it yeah so you just took a pause yeah. of studying yeah. oh man okay so and how did it feel to be back in school yeah it was definitely different <laughs> because there was just like I forgot, obviously forgot a lot <laughs> <laughs> during the five years I didn't do, go to school, and then I had to like kind of catch up on that. Yeah, your brain got filled up with how to run routes and stuff. Uh, <laughs> you forgot everything with what is it? Engineering? You, you're an yep. engineer, right? Yep. Okay. Okay. So then you had to go back to school after being in the NFL. Sitting. Where are you studying? And it was in, in Cross Island. In Island. Okay. Okay. So that's probably a big adjustment. Yep. Okay. And then you start playing football again in the GFL with the unicorns. Walk me through how that felt. I don't think it felt too different. Like there were some players still there that I knew from mm -hmm. before. So that was kind of nice. And it was just like, I don't know, the unicorns, it's just like, you always kind of feel welcome. Mm -hmm. I feel like, yeah. So, so felt totally welcome coming back. Do you feel like, do you feel like your football skills totally transformed over these years and coming back? You, uh, it was a lot easier for you, even more, even easier for you. It was definitely easier, but it's also different because I was so used to like when you run a route to get the ball at a certain right. Point, and it's oh just, like, yeah, timing is so different. Uh -huh. I think that was the biggest like difference basically coming from like nfl quarterbacks yeah. and stuff yeah where it's the more almost like to anticipate you being open and mm -hmm. then coming back and you like yeah you the ball, <laughs> <give me> the <laughs> ball. So they're waiting yeah for the ball. and then even when you catch the ball it's like you don't get hit right away yeah. you have like this almost like <laughs> it feels forever that you have like oh no it's coming okay <laughs> everything's delayed yeah and i kind of had to get used to that again okay where it's just like you don't have to brace for the impact you can just like get ready to like go upfield and oh, just run yeah that's super interesting wow that's super interesting that makes a lot of sense uh, there was a uh, well you say there was um oftentimes you didn't have to brace to get hit right away however i would like to take you back to the cefl championship <laughs> game innsbruck austria we are playing the swarco raiders i think we're down six points or something yeah we're down yeah. six points right yeah. and there's a couple minutes left and we're going on a what will hopefully be a game-winning drive and it's like third and eleven, and this is all available in the my little documentary on my YouTube channel, <laughs> rating the Alps. But you throw what is it a seam to you on no. third and eleven, and it's like if you draw if you don't catch this ball, unicorns are gonna lose. Oh. If you catch it, maybe we can keep yeah. we can keep going. At least first down. Yeah. Um, Alex throws it in there, kind of <laughs> hangs you out to dry a little bit. You catch it, and the safety comes. Knocks your helmet off with a, a targeting hit. <laughs> he ends up getting ejected. But what you get up and <laughs> you flex on this guy. 
just have absolutely dominating. What, how how do you feel at this moment? What what are the emotions when you make this catch, get popped, and it doesn't affect you? It was weird because it like it didn't hurt at all. Yeah. Like the hit hurt didn't hurt at all. I didn't even realize I lost my helmet. Yeah. Like Ali gave me the helmet with like here. I was like, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, obviously that kept the drive going and kept our chances to win up. So I love that, that when you when because I, I was filming right there on the sideline. Yeah. I had the great angle and you looked right at the sideline. <laughs> flex right here. And like, oh, Moritz, let's go. <laughs> yeah, you were yelling something on the sideline. So I was, just I was like, screaming. <laughs> I was hyping you up, man. It was good content. It was really good for the for the documentary. Yeah. Check it out. It's a cool shot. Great catch. Um, so that was cool. How, so how did it feel then? Did you, did you still get coming back to Germany after being, you know, playing at such a high level in the NFL, come back to Germany, obviously a lower level of football. Do you still get a sense of satisfaction playing or is it different? Yeah, it was still a lot of fun. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I just like to do play football. Yeah. <laughs> it really doesn't matter the level. Yeah. Like it was fun in Greisheim. It was fun in Schwäbisch Hall. Yeah. It was Sometimes fun in NFL. I was gonna say, yeah, is that fun? fun? Yeah, <laughs> or is that? It's, it's more work. business than, yeah, than fun. But it's yeah. still fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say. So did did you? I feel like it's so much pressure, especially yeah. for a, a guy like you who didn't go through like a college system, having to learn everything. It was just like yeah. a whole level extra. But you did was, have fun. Yeah, you I think that fun? was the hardest part in the first year too. Like it was just so much new stuff. Yeah, and like I didn't even know what to like focus on it was just like yeah so much <laughs> just so how'd you cope with that like i'm trying to put myself in your shoes like i i went to a new country to play football yeah. obviously a, a lower level of football but it, but like the unicorns and the teams in the gfl they have this whole support system to support somebody coming over from a different country yeah. and they've dealt with americans in the past no nobody in the nfl cares about like making sure the the guy from Germany is like a, a acclimating and yeah. getting all this. Like, how did you deal with all of this? I don't, I don't even know. Like, <laughs> the hardest part is like because after practice, like the other players would like call their friends or whatever and tell them yeah. about that. Like, everyone in Germany would be sleeping. Oh yeah, because the time, the time so difference. Like, yeah, that was like I think the hardest part that I couldn't really like call too much at home too. Mm-hmm. So it was just like I don't know, just grinding yeah, every day just grinding, just, head down grinding yeah. did it feel lonely at times uh yeah, it was just i had so much to do yeah i guess like yeah when i didn't because especially in a rookie year you have like all these extra meetings or like stuff you should mm-hmm. not do which yeah. is kind of like yeah you shouldn't do that it's pretty <laughs> obvious but <laughs> you gotta teach yeah, young remind, remind them again <laughs> the germans don't need that <laughs> extra meeting but the americans do yeah for sure, <laughs> I can't. I, that was really hilarious to you. Probably getting some of these things that they tell NFL rookies, like, "Yeah, don't spend all your money, don't blah blah blah." Like, and you're just like, "Yeah, of course, I'm a sensible German, but you know, young Americans." Yeah, when they were talking about like, "Don't get anyone pregnant; that's gonna yeah. be expensive." And yeah. then you see how many people already have kids, and yeah. you're like, <laughs> uh, "Damn it!" <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's so funny that you had those. Okay, so then well, how did you kind of spend your free time after practice? And aside, if, if you had any time outside of studying the playbook, working out, what did you do for fun when you were in, in your NFL time? Like during the season, not too much because yeah. I was very tired all the time. And like if I did something mostly with Joel yeah. and David because I spent a lot of time with them mm. and then Joel got cut, then it was a little harder. That sucks. Yeah, that sucks about the NFL. Your, your friends yeah. get cut. Yeah, and you just get sent away. Cut the rope. I was hanging out with some with a safety. I can't remember his name. <laughs> but then he got cut like two weeks after that, Damn and I was just like, "Yeah, I don't think I should like <laughs> develop too deep of friendships because that makes." <laughs> it's no kind of sad. Yeah. It's kind of sad. Yeah. yeah, it's the reality of it, though. Yeah. It's just like one day, like, oh, he's gone, and I might not ever yeah. see him again. It's a cutthroat, cutthroat business. The NFL is. I've just like seen some of that with my brother as well, mm. and it's just it's so cutthroat and just yeah. can be so heartbreaking. Um. Well, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, back to to so like outside of football, American culture. Kind of want to get your thoughts on adjusting to American culture. What were some of the biggest 
shocks for you or adjustments living in the United States outside of football? It's hard because I was not living like the normal American life, so like it's hard to compare, but I don't know. I adjusted good with the car. I got a big truck. Nice. <laughs> yes, what kind of truck when did I, you get? I got a car. What'd I you got get? A Chevy Silverado. You are diving into the American experience. I'm so yeah, proud of you. That was that was the goal. <laughs> to like at least <laughs> look like an American when I'm driving. <laughs> yeah. Big old guy yeah. with a truck. <laughs> Should have got a cowboy hat too. That would look great. Okay. Yeah. How about like how about like dealing with Americans? I talk about this a lot of time on my YouTube channel and stuff. Like Americans are I'm generalizing here, of course, but a lot of times Americans are kind of flippant, um, superficial a little bit yeah, with yeah. friendships and yeah. stuff like this. Very different than Germans who are much more deeper and like uh, oftentimes a little slower to make close friends, but they're deeper friendships. Did you have any adjustments with that? Uh, with friends, not really, because the people I was hanging around obviously got cut <laughs> and that <laughs> basically solved the whole thing. <laughs> but with the, like, definitely everyone tells it, like, oh, yeah, I'll just hit me up whenever. And it's like, you know, I don't think if you actually meet them, they're going to yeah come through with that. Hit me Which, up whenever, like, man. It's, it's not always true. Like, yeah. For example, like a coach invited me for Thanksgiving and I just said, yeah, yeah I have nothing else to do. And then he, I actually went there. Okay, so nice. it was kind of, yeah, not every American. Yeah. Is like it's that. not all, it's not yeah. all, uh, all the time. Yeah. It's just, you know, we have a reputation. <laughs> yeah. Were there any other, any other kind of culture shock stuff that you had to adjust to? I think most of the time it was just like the, living alone in general yeah like that was just hard to adjust to like i don't know if there would have been more that i could have compared or if i would have actually moved out in germany before and had to get my car and had to like yeah find my apartment and do all that stuff but because you can't you're getting like all of these life adjustments yeah all at once yeah. it's like kind of hard to <laughs> kind of hard to put your finger on kind of which is which yeah. How about American fast food? Did you have any American fast? Did you ever eat fast food over there? And did you have a uh, a favorite? I like Chick Fil A a lot. Chick Fil A is great. Yeah. How about Chipotle? What's your opinion on Chipotle? Uh, it's good sometimes, but I think it really depends on like the location because I've had some where it's like very bad. You can get bad Chipotle. Like, yeah. Have you been to the Chipotle in Frankfurt? Uh, I think I have. Like after a game. Well, I'm going to say that it's I, – I think that it's bad because it doesn't have all those tasty American chemicals that yeah. we have. <laughs> well, these food regulations in Germany keep the yummy chemicals. Five guys is a big difference too. Like oh it yeah. tastes so different. Really? Oh, yeah. I always think that like McDonald's here tastes much better than McDonald's in the States. Never to me, had McDonald's never, in the U.S. You never had it? Good, yeah. Just I w- in Germany a few times, but yeah. I heard bad stuff. In the U.S., it's disgusting. Here, it's actually like, – oh, it's not bad sometimes. You know, oh. it's, it's okay. Um. Moving towards more kind of football in general, football in Germany. What is your opinion on the state of football in Germany and now with the German Football League and the European League of Football? What are your thoughts on that? I definitely think there needed to be something that changed Mm -hmm. because it was just like going nowhere. It was just like standstill the whole time because – like when I came back, the whole media coverage, it was all still exactly the same, maybe even worse yeah. <laughs> to a certain point. And it was all to like the like clubs themselves to like show the games and like promote like their product and it should be regulated by some, some league or something. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the good thing about the whole ELF thing that they're actually trying to do that. Yeah. Like... I don't know if it actually helps like young players in Germany with the whole thing because the clubs still have to like <laughs> obviously teach teach young, young yeah. kids how to play football and they if you don't do that they cannot play in the ELF either. So yeah, that's exactly. kind of like the dilemma I think. Yeah, that's how I, was, I mean it's basically they need to find a way to coexist. Yeah. It's like 
the ELF needs talented football players who grew up playing football, and that's what the the GFL does and uh, has done for a long time. And so they need to find a way to coexist. I guess they've finally had some meetings and talk about <laughs> coexisting, and it's uh, hopefully they can do that because I feel like there's so much potential yeah. for football in Germany. You know, did that did that excite you seeing an NFL game be played in Munich last year? Yeah, it was definitely cool. Yeah. But I think, like, because the guys who, like, worked with me, like, doing the whole helping me get over there. Yeah. They were from the NFL UK. So they, like, organized the games in London, too. So oh, really? Kind of, like, always knew what, yep. what stuff's going on. Yo, you knew you had the inside <laughs> info? Did you go to the game last year? No, I was in the, I was in Cincinnati. Oh, at you're in Cincinnati? Yeah, so what are you up? So you're going to, are you going to move? You're moving back to the States. Yeah. Big move, Moritz. You and I are like the opposite human <laughs> beings. Like, I came from America to play football in Germany, and I'm staying here for now, and, and you're going to the States. Did you ever think, when you first went over to go play in the NFL, did you ever, did you ever think that, oh, I'd, I'd stay here and work a real job and actually, like, like are you going to take a shot at actually living in the States right now, or is this just a temporary thing? It's definitely long term yeah thinking because my girlfriend lives there so yeah oh yeah you have an american that's, girlfriend yeah, that's nice. we really are the opposite yeah. <laughs> nice man <laughs> <laughs> okay so you're gonna move to cincinnati yeah how you feel about that i like living there and like the time i spent there was nice yes yeah. definitely has a good german influence like there's a lot of breweries and mm -hmm. just like People say that they are from Germany. <laughs> Do you hear that Americans are. love saying that. Dude, I'm 40% German. <laughs> so my great-grandpa, it's like me being Italian. I have the papers to prove it, though. <laughs> so you see just Americans yeah. come up to you like, oh, dude, I'm German, too. Yeah. Yeah, where are you from? Cincinnati. Uh, yeah, Cincinnati has a huge German influence. Oh. Like a lot of the Midwest has a bunch of German, um, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Heritage. That's the word. You're going to fit right in. They're going to lie. And then you're starting a job. Oh. Engineering. Oh. Putting that brain to use. What's Do you left? <laughs> <laughs> What's left after that hit from the Swarco game? <laughs> Do you think that you'll ever play football again? I don't know. I don't think so because when I live in the U.S., I don't think that's really yeah. possible to do in that kind of yeah. way. And I don't want to stay in Germany, so. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you want to stay in Germany? My girlfriend lives in the U.S. Okay. And I just like it there. This is a good reason. Yeah. This is a Jordan good reason. Jordan has me, like, I think last week. Yeah, because Jordan wants I to heard, recruit you from. Are you still in Germany? <laughs> any chance? I was like, no. Just okay. waiting right now. <laughs> it should be any moment. Jordan would love to see you play with your brother. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> that was his argument. <laughs> you know, I played with my brother this last uh. year. It was pretty good. You could try it out. It was pretty good. Lived together. We only got in two fights. So I'm sure you guys can handle it. Okay, so no football in your foreseeable future. Do you feel happy and content with your football life? Yeah. I think I tried a lot of different yeah. levels and stages, and I think the end is pretty cool too, like – Go undefeated the whole year. Yeah. And win everything that I could have won in that year. Yeah, that's great. So. I mean, yeah, that's, nobody's had more of a range of football than no. you <laughs> in such a short amount of time. <laughs> yeah, man, I feel like you should be super, super proud. You're, I don't know if you, I mean, maybe you start to realize it now, but you're an absolute legend in football in Germany. And like, so many little kids look up to you and really put. Put put it on the map that it's possible yeah. you can come from Germany and go play in the states and go be in the NFL. Yeah. Like nobody, many people didn't think that was possible before, and you kind of yeah. I think that's the coolest thing about the whole thing. Like even in the Super Bowl, Jordan Mailata, yeah, he like he basically came through the same program that got established and made possible to through what I did. So that's, that's so sick. Kind of like the cool thing about it. Like all the other people, like even David Bada. Yeah. Jakob Johnson, like all the other guys that are now doing something in the NFL. It's just, I think that's the coolest thing about the whole thing. That's incredible, man. That's like a real lasting legacy. Yeah. And it's like you basically started a pipeline. Oh. And now, like you said, Johnson, and you got, um, who else? Oh, D What's the guy's name? 
The dude from the surge who's with the Colts, Debo Um Dabo. 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 Marcel Dabo, yeah. Um Marcel Dabo, yeah. David Bada yeah. who also played yeah. the Unicorns with us. Like I'll start with you, man. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty that's I think that's the coolest thing about the whole. Yeah. Do people around Germany recognize you often? No, it was it was a lot like after the draft, like yeah. when I came back between OTAs and camp. It's probably crazy. Yeah, that was kind of weird. <laughs> people stop you all the time for pictures, autographs? I think most people were like talking like behind the back and be like, oh, he's like that, some words. And then when I went to games, obviously that was kind of, yeah. I'd always try to be undercover and yeah. just like. <laughs> it's kind of hard. Sneak in. <laughs> yeah. That's I remember one sense. time in Stuttgart and then they like called it over the whole stadium system and like <laughs> zoomed in on me and I was Gosh. like god damn I just wanted to come and like watch the unicorns play Bart Burgers in the house yeah. go ahead and ask him for a photo yeah, that was that was pretty bad <laughs> oh yeah that's super annoying okay was it cool did it feel cool at all at, at times like, like man people are recognizing me for me being a football player that yeah but taking pictures I don't, I yeah. don't like it all <laughs> just Sports. like I don't know I don't what are you going to do with that? <laughs> <laughs> That's our man's silence. That's the man's silence. Um, okay, so you guys, like I said, we were talking about the, the T-Lap sports stuff, and this is something you started with your brother, and this is something that will be a project ongoing oh. with you and kind of keep you connected into the football, into the football world. world. I think there's no better person to have, to have started such a project. You learned a lot of stuff, got a lot of – Good knowledge in that big brain of yours, uh, <laughs> not just engineering stuff, sports, <laughs> athletic stuff as well. So uh, that's super awesome, man. I'm super excited for you guys. Uh, check that out in the link, like I said earlier. <sighs> it's a man, Moritz Burner. Thanks a lot. Thank you. For sure, man. Good stuff.